Oh, have we started? Yeah. We've started. Okay. Uh, I'm ready. Of course I am. <laughs> uh, well, okay. So today, um, I am thrilled to be introducing the talented and captivating Nigerian-American musician, Hannah Jadagu. Um, uh, I have all this uh, prepared. Um, okay, yeah. Anyways, Hannah, she is someone I've actually been really eager to share for a while now, uh, since about spring of last year, and I'm really excited to be doing that now, finally. Uh, who is Hannah? Aside from being the show's first artist with a palindrome for a name, Hannah is quite the young artist, graduated high school not too long ago, currently studying music business at NYU, and is making waves and impressions in the music world, it's the story we all love seeing and hearing. Her music is vibrant and shimmering, relatable and personal. Indie rock and bedroom pop, bedroom pop sounds melt together in their brightest and darkest ways, and it's in these spaces that Hannah pours her words into. As a teenager, she hasn't wasted any time to write songs that balance youthful, carefree emotions and summer bops with songs that touch on the harsher realities of the world that we live in as well. To me, I feel her music has appeal to all kinds of listeners wherever you may fall. Hannah's love for music started in her early teens when she was a percussionist in her school band for all three years of middle school. And starting from around seventh grade, she began learning garage band to record covers. It wasn't until her 11th grade year when she released her original song, Night Drive Boy on SoundCloud that she started to take her music more seriously after she saw the song quickly pick up traction on the algorithm and garnering a thousand plays. When it comes to her music, the sounds and influences, the writing process, it is normally a solo endeavor and she has taught herself how to capture, write, and record her music all on her own with just her iPhone, a guitar interface, a, a guitar interface adapter, and the microphone of her Beats headphones. And she has also a close knit of uh, she has a close knit friend group that are musicians too that she finds support, advice, and creative ideas with, whom all have helped provide inspiration and in shaping up her sound up to this point. Which brings us to the current time. In the middle of juggling school, touring, and making music, Hannah believes that the recent major major changes in her life, such as moving from Texas to New York, starting university, and meeting other creatives around her, have brought the largest impact to the sound and direction of the music she's currently working on. We'll be playing a standout song of hers from her EP, What Is Going On, uh, which is um, a product that is from that era of, of her recording just with her iPhone entirely, which is really cool. Uh, and I feel that this showcases her indie rock influences and introspective lyricism. Let's hear what is going on with Hannah Jdagu with the song Bleep Bloop, which is what my microphone is doing. Enjoy. Welcome home, Colombia. Beautiful, beautiful.
All right. How do we feel about these bleep bloops that Tana is providing us? I, Thoughts I was... on the bleep bloops? I Jesse feel. First. I feel like like I'm. It's a warm, sunny day. I'm like lying down on the grass, and and then Ooh. I go eat some chicken nuggies and take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of chicken nuggies? Uh, the dinosaur ones, obviously. The best. Dino nuggets are great. Yeah. I've been living off of those for the last week. <laughs> nice. Dino nuggets and baked potatoes. Nice. Uh, Trick Switch says this feels like a memory of a dream, which I really like. Mm. Uh, mm. Uh, man, that outro was like that outro. Uh, mm -hmm. Whenever it kind of kicked up the production was just yeah. so pretty. Mm -hmm. It was so perfectly placed. Yeah. And uh, I love it. I'm super, super impressed. It was recorded on an iPhone. Oh, yeah. yeah. The everything, yep. yeah, everything. everything. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. When you listen to this song, do you think that it should be daytime? I like where your mind is at because that's exactly the question I was gonna ask. Because uh, Jesse started describing like how it made him feel, and I was like, "Whoa, it's like sun! It's it's bright for you." I was like, I was wondering like what other people felt because I didn't feel that when I listened to this song. Uh, it felt more nighttime for me. I think nighttime drive could work or yeah. like daytime in a park laying on yeah. some grass yeah. could be yeah. nice. Nighttime drive on back windy back roads where the speed limit is low. Uh -huh. Like you are not driving very fast to this song. <laughs> uh -huh. It's and like a no leisurely can't, like, dirt road. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think uh, part of my um, impression of like what's probably happening time wise or environment wise in terms of like where does this song where is this song emanating from i feel like maybe it's i have it's it's a bit more contextual for me um mostly because uh, i first heard the song from the ep and the ep starts off very bright and there's a song called um sunny day i think um so it i think like the journey of the ep almost felt like it starts with like a sunrise and it feels like it's this is the last song on the album. It, it's oh. kind of getting to like an unwinding point. So I think like maybe I kind of just like tricked myself into feeling like it was a, a nighttime sort of song. Um, so recontextualizing it for like a sunny or a more brighter sort of um, feeling is a really interesting thought. I think it changes a lot in terms of the mood of the song, thinking of it in a more uh, sunny or bright way. Placing it in time of day, I could see sunset like but still at sunset <laughs> yeah maybe on a picnic blanket yeah. and then the fireflies like it's when it starts to get Ooh. dark you know when you first start to see fireflies come out mm -hmm. when it starts to get dark enough for them that's that's what we've hit when that uh sparkly production comes in at the end mm -hmm. we've hit firefly would, time would you say twilight i don't know <laughs> certainly not the books or the movie there are no yeah, vampires this involved could work well on a twilight despite movie. the sparkling maybe if they zoomed in on his his face and the sparkling <laughs> that he does in the sunlight. that's that's when the sparkles come yeah. in yes mm -hmm. the twilight soundtracks are just rock and good they yeah are pretty good yeah this could fit this could fit <laughs> See, yeah yeah Uh, about that outro though that you mentioned um i like the first time i i listened to this it didn't quite um it was just like a good ambient sort of feeling for it mm -hmm. that like similar to the song i brought first season hey sandy um where there's that like some talky bits and some like children and whatever um but but you listen to the outro for this one and it's it's a call and i'm presuming with like her mom or mm -hmm. someone who at least like cares about her and tells her she loves her. And that, so that makes me think that this song is trying to depict the feelings that they have of talking to this person who cares about them. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, I think so. Um, that, I, I'm getting a, a similar reading of, of the song that way as well. Um, I feel like maybe now I'm just kind of connecting the dots with like the song title bleep bloop is probably a kind of like funny way hannah thinks of um uh the uh the tone from like a voice message because mm. the, the the outro thing was mm. a voice recording of a 
of a voice message it sounds like and you know they have like a tone at the beginning so maybe the bleep bloop is is referring to that and the subject matter and the like the lyrics definitely feel a little bit abstract but like when i think about like the big things because i've like watched like her interviews and things like that um a big thing about like her art right now and her music is kind of like figuring out like her direction in terms of like life and you know what she's doing and this feels like a very introspective song and looking at the lyrics it feels it's kind of like trying to place this feeling of like where am i heading in a way and getting this conversation at the end of you know i've been interacting with you know this loved one through voice um messages and um there's that feeling of like where am i going this is where i'm from you know family and, and groundedness and things like that and kind of like trying to like write a, a stream of consciousness consciousness sort of song regarding those feelings so that's what i feel like with this song it, it feels like there's um that dialogue happening with um you know who am i and and also the things that keep me grounded which are the voice messages it's also acknowledging that time is passing yeah. if you're figuring out what you're supposed to be doing or who you're supposed to be. Sorry, I keep kicking things. Who you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, but time is still passing even while you're figuring that out. And there can be sort of a sense of urgency there, even though this song is anything but urgent in mm -hmm. the sound palette of it. Right. I think it's very important to remember, if you are friends with musicians, to be very discriminate with the kind of voicemails that you leave them because they will <laughs> very true i'm trying to think back in, in, into like the things that i've told you know people on on voice recordings and thankfully a lot of the times i do voice recordings it's it's usually an an act and a performance so if i end up on a song chances are you're not going to recognize that it's me and thankfully for me i'm i'm not going to recognize it's anything embarrassing so uh I, I i at least have that working for me if you end up on a song and you don't bring it to listen in <laughs> i'm going to be so upset with you i'm going to find it and bring it and not tell you i'll have to look which would be awful yeah. um, like do you do like funny voices like Hello, yeah. this is Alexis. Yeah. How are you exactly. doing? <laughs> yeah, I make uh, characters and stuff, and sometimes I'll I'll not even like talk about what the call is even about. I'll just like leave them <laughs> leave them a little gift, and I you know my number's attached, so they know who it is, and they'll just you know reach back out to me. So why not you know have some fun with it? How do I get on this distribution list? Of uh... I too want silly <laughs> voice messages. <laughs> Uh, and stupid hmm. voices. We'll we'll have to see about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I you start I a music career. Oh, <laughs> and then and then you'll you'll give me a purpose to to you know send you one. I'll wow. release one song without any effort, <laughs> just so that you send them. Yay! Back to the song. <laughs> 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 the reason we are gathered here to get today. Uh, uh huh. Um, I. No itch. I really, really enjoy like the technical things that they do to give us that sort of mm -hmm. like relaxed, chill sound, like the the detuned, warbly guitar, mm -hmm. and even like listening to the production elements, the the stereo mix of the backing vocals and the instrumentals kind of wanders a little mm -hmm. bit here and there. Like it's not like this is so distracting. It's not like all the way left and then all the way right. Like some things are where they're just trying to like show off. Um, but it's just like kind of like twinkling in the back of my head as I listen. And it's, that's no hate really to the cool. show offs. No. <laughs> I love those two. Just it's mm -hmm. it's uh, more subtle, I think. And I mm -hmm. enjoy that. Yeah. I think it definitely adds to the vibe mm -hmm. to have that. Like wandering thoughts. Lo-fi music. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And heavy reverb. Reverb makes everything sound good. <laughs> yeah. Which is definitely here. Yeah. yeah. Probably, though, a really clever, like, I think a lot of very clever choices were made to make something that sounded like a finished product from something like an iPhone when you think about how this was recorded. Um, that I think that, 
you could very easily just make something that sounds like a demo and release it and call it a demo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it sounds like a voice note you left, but so much effort was put in to make this uh, still a polished product right. um, with, I think, recognition that that polish is going to look different than something that's produced in a professional studio. Yeah. yeah so did and- she produce the whole thing as well, or is there a, a production team behind it? Um, for this EP, I am not sure from the information I was exposed to mm-hmm. it seems like it's mostly just her on this era and prior to mm-hmm. what she's released um she has re- uh, released um i think one song after this ep and i didn't look into the information on that but i would imagine it's still just her um she has an album coming up which i'm hearing it's going to have a you know, bigger effort in terms of production. So whether that means it's a bigger effort and just her like before or a bigger mm-hmm. effort and more people, I don't know. But uh, at least in terms of this, uh, from the sources I found, it's pretty much just her. Super cool. Yeah. Really impressive. And I imagine uh, that's probably all that we have to say. Unless anyone else has anything to share, point oh, out the 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 trap rhythm. Um, the, uh-huh. first, I knew Jesse third, had something else. <laughs> uh, was I I was like, is this is this trap? Because it doesn't doesn't sound like trap, but the rhythm's mm-hmm. there, and just, but it's like so chill, and I don't know if yeah. I've really experienced that before. It's like this is this is nice, but mm-hmm. yeah. Not having yeah, to think, get like super hyped, but like yeah, it's good. Mm-hmm. yeah. I think something that I I really appreciate about this song, which you know we we've definitely put some spotlight on the outro and the the sudden introduction of um, instrumentation happening. Um, what I like about that, what I really appreciate about that, is how she managed to make those two parts of the song feel very distinct to the point where even when I am listening to the song, already familiar with it, it still catches me off guard. The beginning really feels like its own thing, even though for the most part, everything that's happening in the beginning half of the song is still present in the second half of the song. Um, But there's something about the way that she arranged it uh, in the v- very calm first half that makes it feel like its own thing and makes me really appreciate even more the uh, the the rhythms and the the uh, sounds and the bleep bloops that are happening on the second half. So that is something I, I really do appreciate that she somehow captured and maybe it's just my interpretation of how I'm listening to it, but it, it always affects me that way when I hear it. Is there anything else we should know about this artist? Uh, so, um, about Hannah, um, yeah, uh, I think I was really excited about this uh, song and artist, mostly because I was having this conflict of like, do I bring her now because I'm, I'm really liking her music or do I wait for the new album and then bring her? Mm-hmm. Um, but I decided to bring her now because I feel like giving everyone an opportunity to hear who she is and and uh if you end up liking her getting to also join me in the excitement of her album coming out which is like in two months i think it's dropping in may um i i wanted to create that opportunity so um yeah be on the lookout for her new album it's coming out in may um and it's been about a year since she's released something so i i am like really looking forward to like what new sounds that we're going to hear so um yeah i'm super excited for the new album and hopefully you all are as well and other than that um you know same stuff as usual uh most of these artists are very uh active and reachable on the interwebs and uh if you want to you know stay up to date with hannah she has her own website hannahjadagu.com you can find her socials there keep up to date with her let her know she's awesome and uh yeah that's pretty much it 